Hello. Have you ever written a uh, written? <laughs> what a start. Have you ever read a book by a Trinidadian author? Um, if not, today is your day to pick one up. I am talking about the bread the devil need. Um, I'm a bit of a tongue twister for me because I always get the last word. Like I don't know, I can't say it well. But this is by a Trinidadian author. The first time I read anything um, written by someone from Trin Trinidad and Tobago, I will stop saying that word now before I butcher it. But it was recommended to me, um, not personally, but by one of the, I would say more. Um, popular booktubers that I follow, Jack Edwards, and I feel like he's recently got a lot into translated fiction, which I love, and the recommendations that he gives are really, really good. Um, but it's like a hit or a miss, but most of the time it's a hit. So I picked it up and I didn't like jump into reading it immediately, I have to be honest. I, it took me maybe like maybe two weeks to a month to actually pick it up and read it because I remember him saying that there's loads of dark themes and loads of, um, I would say, more heavy topics discussed in this book and I was scared that I wasn't in the mood for it. But once I picked it up and I started reading it, I realized that the author did a very good job of the way she describes it. It's very unique, the style in which she writes it, which makes it almost like more digestible. I didn't feel like she was trying to force any reaction or force any kind of emotion out of me. Whereas some other books, if you hear weird noises, it's my puppy. He's very active. Um, yeah, so a lot of books that I read that talk about much heavier topics, they have a, I would say, tendency to kind of go over these very, um, really really difficult topics but in an even more difficult way where you literally don't know what how it's even related to the plot but you're crying but in this case it like i felt like i could read it and there's so much emotion that i felt but none of it felt forced you get it like there's no like cheap shots in making people like emotional i mean like it was a good book because i cried I don't like that so hence I did really like it um, I will say trigger warnings for domestic violence and sexual abuse because that is a big part of the book and if it's not something that you are comfortable listening or reading about then I would say you should probably start watching the video because a lot of it is about that and in terms of themes I've actually written it down because I feel like sometimes especially because I read this a while ago I forget so in terms of themes I wrote denial in order to survive I think survival is a huge part of this book and not survival in like Hunger Games style survival on like day-to-day -day dealing with people around you and trying to kind of make your way through life while also making sure you don't get deeper into the mess that you're already living in. Denial, because the main character through which the book is written, whose perspective we really get to um, immerse ourselves in, she seems to be talking about things in such a nonchalant way that almost makes you feel like she's kind of accepted it or is in denial about the fact that this is an issue. It's more like she's just kind of cruising past life and denying that there's anything wrong with it. But the denial is not um out of like sh that she doesn't know something is wrong it's more like survival there's also a talk about intergenerational trauma so at least for the book it doesn't go like every other chapter but um f quite a few chapters are kind of a look back into this particular week in january in this little girl's life and then you kind of jump back and you are following her current life so there is a lot of talk about her mom her uncle her brother and all the things that happened when she was younger and then you get to know about her life now we should put the book down um her life now where she talks about work her partner her colleagues her friends etc so it's like you keep jumping um across those two timelines the narrator doesn't really share much of her own I would say thoughts and ideas for most of the book up until the very end. For most of the time you feel like she there's a lot of self-blame and also like very little self self-actualization. So you feel like she's almost very caught up in trying to think about how she can minimize these horrible things happening to her, even though she's not the one causing them. And she doesn't actually realize that it's not in her hands unless she removes herself from that situation, none of this is gonna stop. But for some people, it's just not possible. And I think sometimes when we're not in those shitty situations ourselves, it's so easy to kind of put the blame on the person saying, why didn't they leave? Why didn't they um, do better? Or, you know, why didn't they ask for help? But when you read this book, I feel like it gives maybe a lot more for people to think about rather than like, oh, she could have done something about it. Well, there's a lot 
things are a lot deeper and more effed up than that. And the saddest part is I feel like this main character has just a lifetime of trauma. So when she's living, it, feel like, it feels like she's just perpetually enduring things. Like almost one thing after the other, just kind of every single small thing, big thing just piles up. And at, at a certain point, you're almost thinking like, why is she putting up with this? Like what is her reason to still be here? And what is her kind of meaning in life to kind of go on? That's what I was asking, but you don't really get like a straightforward answer or anything like that. But you do get a lot of perspective on why a lot of people choose to continue living even when it feels like there's nothing there for them to kind of hold on to. The writer actually writes for the Trinidadian Guardian and also children's books which is like such a contrast from this book because here she's talking about a woman in her kind of i think either late 20s or the early 30s and i think she just turns 30 sorry i forgot the age but around there and her name is alethea which is sh uh, the short is ali so she is someone who works in a little boutique she's a manager so she's doing pretty well for herself in a small town in trinidad and she has a group of colleagues and at home she's living with her boyfriend leo i believe and she you start the story by listening to her kind of everyday narrate she goes opens the store has these conversations and then she proceeds to talk about more i would say intense things but with the same nonchalant tone like i got home i knew by the way he looked at me that he wanted to beat me up so i just ran to the bathroom and i was like wait a minute like why how is this being read in like one breath this is crazy but the inner monologue of the main character was very very limited for most of the book so she was just kind of telling you like one thing after the other as they were happening and you start forming all these ideas and all of these um i would say you start forming these almost like characters in your head where you're like oh my god these people like why are they like this why does don't people just give her a break and from there towards the very end you actually you start hearing more and more from her perspective and i think it's more like character development that the writing style tries to portray because in the beginning she's very much like just enduring and from then she starts having more of an idea of how she can maybe escape the situation and build a life outside of it and the more she tries to do that the more her physical actions are i would say rebellious the more of her inner monologue that we get to hear and we get to kind of make a more fleshed out character for her i wrote that she's like an npc in her own life and I hope that gives you an idea of like what I mean by her being a very passive character in this story for most of it. You almost feel like shaking her and being like, get up. <laughs> but I will say, I think the point where I stopped questioning this character was when the story panned back to her childhood. And then it, like I've already felt like the adulthood was just like effed up, but then the childhood part starts and it's just a whole new kind of worms. and. It was i think the childhood part got me more especially when she was talking about like her relationship her mother with her mother when she used to play in the backyard of her neighbor's garden and she had this little brother that she needed to take care of who um, ate nettle or something and he was hurt and how she blamed herself because she couldn't look after this little boy hello hello do you want to come up what's up what's up you want a treat She was supposed to take care of this child and she felt so guilty for not doing a good job while she was a child herself. I think she was like six or eight looking after like two year old, which I know that this is like a theme in poorer countries. I myself have seen it growing up most of my time in India. Like if you look at um, communities, some communities cannot or they don't really have this even concept of hiring someone to look after your children, right? So everyone in the family chips in and that's a normal thing but if you don't leave a child to look after a child it's like more adult members but sometimes you don't have that choice and mothers just let the older children look after the younger children so it's more like a situation like that but it's still like hearing about certain things that happen when she was left alone with a younger brother or how she almost protected the younger brother from the parents was really heartbreaking because it's like Ah, uh, this is probably so many people's story, you know, not just, I wasn't looking at the, this, I had a lot of like hypothetical fa uh, families and people in my head at the same time who were probably going through this, so it hit me harder 
it did also make me really angry thinking about how many women do probably live a life like this and they don't really have um, the power or the chance to do anything about it and it makes me feel like what is what makes one life more precious than the other like why do some people have it that bad and then there are other people who have it bad but it's not like that the level is just two completely different things it's like i know you cannot compare and everybody has their own form of pain and suffering that they're going through but some people it just feels like they get no break and that is really frustrating about this story because you know that she's she's a uh, kind of like a jane not sorry i shouldn't say jane though she's kind of like uh like this you remember that book kim jeong 1984 like a woman a name that represents a massive part of the population i feel like alethea is like that girl who just maybe represents such a huge chunk of women so a few more notes i wrote um i think the book will help a lot of people a lot of victims realize that they indeed are victims and what's happening to them is not right it'll also help a lot of people recognize people in their lives that are holding them back one bad influence can really stop us from all the good experiences that are waiting for us after a life like that like after the kind of life that Althea had it's generally difficult to find a reason to live on and the book doesn't shy away from admitting it so it's not trying to paint a picture that one day everything will be roses and unicorns and rainbows things can even get worse before they get better but it's just about finding the people the right people who will help you through that and sometimes the best we're gonna get is just some support in all of it like honestly someone reaching out and just helping us a little bit can be that rainbow at the end like it doesn't have to be that all of this will end and suddenly you're gonna be happy that usually doesn't happen and support from people we love when that's missing i think it can be even more crushing so if not anything i think for anyone who's not in that position themselves it's a call for them to actually reach out to people and be there for people who might be in that situation and not kind of be passive observers in terms of criticism i do think the ending was a bit mismatched perhaps because althea's own religious um, thing was not really ever emphasized but her brother is a I want to say a pastor. I'm not very, um, I, th I don't know the right word for it. What's the other word? Pastor, preacher? I don't know. Someone in the church. Um, but he brings her to this place to kind of like have a catharsis, like have a bit of a recovery thing. But um, yeah, it just felt a bit mismatched and a bit cringe, almost like this. 90s rom-com ending whereas the rest of the book was written so like it was so real it was so authentic i just felt like the ending was a bit weird especially because the place was next to a beach and she sat on the oh, it was just which is too what do you call it like felt like one of those like books that i was made to read in catholic school the ending really fun and really positive representations of friendship one of the things i love the most about the book, about the book because there were so many different complicated people around her but they all had their own way of supporting her which i thought like that's the silver lining you know sometimes the people you think are the most important to you really should be the ones to be left behind and then the peripheral characters are the ones who are actually keeping you going because they just interject at the right moment and do the the bare minimum but sometimes that bare minimum is enough because the people in your life the ones you care about are not doing the bare minimum but you still keep them in your life i'm criticizing myself at this point <laughs> there's so many stories that you hear about people having bad um situations and being the hero of their lives and you know coming out of it fighting for it but some people have had it so bad since such a young age they're just conditioned to endure anything bad that will happen they just think that's how it is because they've been dealing with so much shit for a really long time and nobody really tells them that actually what you went through even as a child was not okay that shouldn't have happened and that's why you're letting so many messed up things happen to you now but like that shouldn't have happened and you should have been more critical of the people in your life and given them less chances and you know thing goes from there when we are so satisfied with so little from such a young age we don't really expect much as we grow older and that can put us in this like cycle of like okay we'll just this is how bad it's always going to be I, this is just how it is whereas having a different perspective on like okay i can actually have it a lot better if i change certain things things will actually start kind of getting better immediately but it's just that initial kind of push even for someone to realize that 
the people you cared about so much might not have cared about you or like some harsh truths needed to be told for people to realize that you need to come out of this without some aspects of your life still there like you'll probably be stripped down and everything you care about will probably be not be there anymore but you will come out like a healthier more stable person at the end of this and it's something i think the story is like even if you're not um going through the same exact thing she's going through it is very relatable on a different level it's something that anyone can read and come away with and just be like yeah i know that so much of my so many things that have happened in my life i've kind of been like passively just observing and not doing things about but probably i should um, I hope that gives you like without any spoilers getting too much into the plot gives you an idea of what kind of book it is um, Yeah, that's all for today, and I'll see you soon with my next uh, review or a vlog or something else <laughs>